today we are going to go over how to set up a 201X and a 210X. They're both the exact same drive. Only difference is the 210X has a step pulse multiplier right here. That allows you to run it in full step, half step, five micro step, or 10 micro step, as opposed to the 10 micro step uh, standard resolution of the 201X. So first thing you want to do is get the manual. And we're just gonna quickly go through all of the important things you need to know for setting it up. Uh, you'll need a DC power supply between 80 and 80 volts, and those will go on terminals one and two. Uh, I have a large capacitor here. It's really just so I can clip things on easily. Uh, you don't need that. Chances are you'll be wiring wire direct into the actual terminals. So put ground on terminal one, DC positive on terminal two, I have 24 volts going to it, and now we're going to turn power on, just see if you get a green light. So we turn it on, and you see the green LED. Uh, I have the motor hooked up already, uh, and so I have holding torque as well. Uh, the motor should go phase A in terminal B, er, in terminal three, phase A not in terminal uh, four, phase B in terminal five, and phase B not in terminal six. So now that we have that, what we'll do is get our step and direction which I have coming from two function generators. I, and again, I have resistors going into these terminals. You don't need that. This is just so I can clip things on easily and uh, not waste video time wiring things. So we're gonna hook up the step first. So common, which will be ground in this case. Uh, you can use five volts or ground with the 201X and the 210X. Uh, so ground will go to terminal 10, which is common. Direction, or I'm sorry, step goes to terminal nine. Direction, we will hook up its ground to terminal 10 and direction to terminal eight. Now we'll turn power on. What I have it doing is I have this set to 10 micro step and a four kilohertz input, which is gonna be two revolutions per second. And it's going to uh, rotate back and forth at one, uh, uh, one direction change per second. So I can turn power on. And we have it. Okay, so you hear how loud the motor is. Uh, if you ever hear a motor like that, that means you did not set current. And so that's what this dip switch is for. So the dip switch, uh, we have a 3.5 amp motor. Uh, and so we have current settings of 3.4 amps and 3.6 amps. Generally what you want to do is choose the one as close to yours without going over. So I choose a 3.4 amp which means I'll turn switches one and four off. Which you can see, I just switch those switches and then the motor will be a lot quieter while it runs. And you can see the waveform is peaking at just over 3.5 amps, or just under 3.5 amps, sorry. Uh, and you can hear the motor is fairly quiet. What you'll then do is we're running at two revolutions per second uh, you'll turn this trim pot, and we say turn it until your motor sounds quiet or sounds good. Uh, this is what that means. If you turn it, you'll hear the motor get noisier and put vibration in there. Uh, that's just not good. Uh, so you turn it until the motor reaches a bit of a sweet spot, which seems to be about right there. And if you look at the... Uh, the oscilloscope right here, we have a current probe on the motor, and you can see what this is actually adjusting. So when we turn it and it gets loud, you can see the crossover point, which is right here, expands, and that's what the noise is. So we turn it down until that crossover is minimized, and it is as quiet as it'll be. So two revolutions per second is going to be the loudest point for a stepper. Uh, as we increase speed, you'll see the motor quiets a lot. The only noise you hear is uh, rotor inertia as it changes direction. Uh, and you can see the waveform changing. Uh, I'm going to turn direction off because direction introduces a large load on the motor and will eventually stall changing direction that aggressively. Uh, so you can see the waveform changing, and this is what the 201X and 210X does, like all of our other drives, it has full step morphing, 
where you will get more torque at higher speeds because it changes to a true full step past uh, about six revolutions per second. So we're back at the noisy area, which is what the trim pot fixes, and this is fixed, and then you can slow it down even more, and you can hear the motor running. So what we'll do now is we'll turn power off, uh, and we'll go over how to change your dip switches, or I'm sorry, your uh, jumper settings on the step pulse multiplier. So right now I have it set to default of 10 micro step. Uh, the 210X, like I said, can do full step, half step, five micro step, or 10 micro step. I, what we'll do is we'll orient this piece of paper so you can see how I have the jumpers. This 10 micro step right here, the jumpers are right there. What we'll do is we'll just go ahead and set it to full step. So we'll remove these jumpers and then set them up according to that diagram. So, pop one right there, pop the second one right there. And now what it's gonna do is when I power it up, it's gonna go 10 times faster than it was before. Uh, that 10 times faster comes at the expense of resolution. So we're gonna power up and the motor will be going uh, at five revolutions per second, I believe. So let's, there we go. So you can see, exact same frequency input, just faster speed on the motor. Uh, this also means that it is a little bit coarser at low speed. So you can hear actual full step movements. Uh, that's actually the, the micro steps. What it does is it interpolates 10 micro steps for every single pulse. So it's smoother than a true full step, but your resolution is still decreased. And then we bring it back up. We accelerate through, uh, that's a first order resonance right there. And then we get to, back to one kilohertz, five revolutions per second. Because remember, it's gonna be 200 pulses per revolution uh, at full step. And that is the quickest way of getting your drive up and running. Uh, one other thing that you may or may not be using is the disable terminal. Uh, if you short the disable terminal, which is terminal 7, to ground, which is terminal 12, uh, it will freewheel the motor. So I make connection there. I can move the motor by hand. As soon as I let go, it resumes. Uh, that does not have to be connected. Generally, it's connected to an emergency stop or something like that. Uh, all I have right now is just a jumper wire between 12 and 7. Every single time I make momentary contact, it will freewheel as long as that is making connection. So it would have to use a latching type switch. And I remove it and it resumes. So that's the quickest way of getting you up and running. Uh, if you have any questions about it, feel free to give us a call, leave a comment, or send an email, and we will be doing more videos later. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more informative videos, tutorials, and more.